On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a one, a blessed and wonderful Wednesday evening to each and every person out there tuning in to On The Spot News Media. Now, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please, like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So watch this now, my peeps. In yesterday evening's vlog, I spoke briefly about a British national that was taken out in a hail of bullets by criminal elements over there in Montego Bay, St. James. Now, the police are theorizing that it was a possible contract knockings and clappings that resulted in the loss of life of the British national. So the Jamaican authorities have revealed further details about the British man whose life was taken in a hail of bullets from a criminal element over there at a guest house in St. James. The police are also theorizing that persons may have been contracted to carry out that brutal knockings and clappings of 33-year-old Sean Pattison presently on your screen right now. The police also stated that the they have information that suggests that Sean Patterson was involved in several illegal activities back in his home country of England. Sean Patterson was the first murder in the new year to be recorded in the St. James Police Division. He arrived in Jamaica on the 29th of December and his life was taken by a criminal element at a villa on January 2nd. Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of the crime portfolio, Fitz Bailey, stated that Sean Patterson and two other men attended the intimate concert in St. Anne, that is the Bujuban and Beris Aman intimate concert right so he stated that all three men returned to the villa on that morning of Monday January 2nd and Sean Patterson's life was taken in a hail of bullets around noon that day so we're gonna hear from Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of the crime portfolio Fitz Bailey as he weighs in on this brutal knockings and clappings of the British National Listen. So on Monday, the second, about 5 a.m., they returned, all three of them would return to one love villa apartment where all three retired to bed in separate rooms. <clears throat> about 12 p.m. on Monday, the second, Patterson woke up and went on the pool deck along with Richards, and they were both talking on their phones. And Richards reported that his back was turned to Patterson when he heard loud explosions only like gunshot and look around and saw a lone gunman dressed in black hooded sweatshirt with a handgun shooting. Patterson and Richards allegedly run off in bushes and that's essentially the circumstances under which he was shot. Based on our investigation it would appear that Patterson, a contract was actually placed on Patterson's head and we believe that this has, it has in international implication. We believe that although the act carried out in Jamaica. We do not believe that the order to kill was given in Jamaica. Patterson himself, based on our investigation, has also criminal record. It is believed that he is involved in a number of what I call violent crimes, gun running, etc. We are following some very good leads. I, I will not go any further than that. We are following some very good leads and I think we have possibly identified the mastermind. That was the voice of Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of the crime portfolio, Fitz Bailey. Now, the British Broadcasting Corporation, which has reported on the matter, stated that a foreign office personnel had uh, been speaking and supporting the family of the British national who lost his life in Jamaica and are presently in contact with Jamaican authorities. St. James recorded the most loss of life for 
2022 with a whopping 198 loss of life, which is definitely up from the 160 recorded in 2021. Summer peeps, the knockings and clappings continues. But Jamaican authorities are stating that they don't believe that the loss of life of the British national has anything to do with drug runnings or criminal activities carried out in Jamaica. It was definitely a contract hit sent from where he came from in England. So now my peeps, over there in the troubled, war-torn, crime-plagued police division of Kingston Western, we are going to talk about a January 1 knockings and clappings, New Year's Day. Yeah, man, may I tell you, the criminal elements continue their reign of terror in the Sunlight Street era of the Kingston Western Police Division, where a long standing war has been going on in that area for years. Now on your screen is just a few of the many vlogs that I covered about happenings in that particular space. Sunlight Street, Raphael Road, Ramsey Road, all those adjoining areas to include Zimbabwe and other communities has been having that long-standing war. So these vlogs, if you have not yet watched these vlogs, you should definitely go over, search for them, watch them so you can get a better understanding of what I'll be speaking on. This long-standing war between the top and bottom of Sunlight Street and adjoining streets and communities has one man in common. This man is definitely no stranger to the police no stranger to community and family members this man is a known criminal element a real old dirty kind of boy from the lower half of sunlight street this man presently on your screen is birth name shadane mackenzie but popularly known in the criminal underworld as philippines or murphy and as I stated earlier, definitely no stranger to the police, as he has had his fair share of run-ins with the Kingston Western Police and also the police from the St. Andrew South Police Division, as their policing area is literally across the road from all of this happenings. Now, this brother is a knackis and clappis, as I stated has been featured on the West Kingston most wanted list for years, but has managed to elude law enforcement. Now a toddler who is related to him, who have survived a can of can of wound to her head back in 2021, is again living in crosshairs of gangsters, so to speak, who reportedly took the life of her great grandfather on New Year's Day. Now, the criminal elements who is aligned to the front section of Sunlight Street are hell bent. They are said to be on a mission to wipe the entire family of Shadane Mackenzie out. They want them off the face of the earth. Anything that is related to Shadane Mackenzie, they say must go now the gang conflict in the community has kept investigators of the kingston western police division busy over the past couple of years with frequent list of released wanted persons and persons of interest however despite entering the new year no ceasefire appears to be on the horizon Criminal elements struck about 7.30 a.m. on January 1, New Year's Day, taking the life of this 74-year-old Rastafari from the Sunlight Street community named Keith Davis, but popularly known in his community as Chinny Dread. Unlike the child 
who survived the July 11, 2021 knockings and clappings to the head. Davis was definitely not so fortunate as he did not survive that brutal onslaught. For years, the police have been trying to apprehend Shadane Philippine Mackenzie, who remains elusive whilst a reign of terror haunts his relative in the crime-torn community. No sources close to on the spot news media stated that the daughter of the Rastaman got up early that morning and was sweeping their yard shortly before tragedy struck. The source stated that the father said to the daughter, Lend me the broom, when I are done? And as she got done sweeping, she handed the father the broom and went inside. Then a car sped right in front of their yard and stopped. Then a barrage of gunshots were heard. It is said that the daughter ran from the house and asked the father if a police that. And the father said, no, it seemed like a gunman. And then be a shot, start fire. The source also stated that the daughter crouched for cover and ran for safety. The source stated that the father, whilst attempting to take cover, trying to run inside, he got a one can to the stomach and fell right in front of his daughter. The source stated that in a bid to save her life, she could not have assisted her own father as he lay there in excruciating pain looking into her eyes before he lost his life. Really sad indeed. The source also stated that the yard is a sectionally concrete fence, but bullets managed to penetrate the zinc portion of the perimeter fencing. So on your screen is the perimeter fencing in full display. Now, in a press release, the Kingston Western Police has stated that there is currently a heightened tension between Bottom Sunlight Street faction that is led by Shadane Philippine Mackenzie and a Zimbabwe gang that is led by Andre Elton, otherwise known as Boops. The police stated that the conflict recently escalated as a result of the loss of life of a man known as Andre Winston Stewart, otherwise known as Soji along Sunlight Street vicinity number 25, where members of Bottom Sunlight Street gang took out that man. Now, the police are saying that Top Sunlight Street men are hellbent in avenging the loss of life of that man and they are teamed up with gangs from the Zimbabwe era of the Kingston Western Police Division. The police are also theorizing that the Lower Sunlight Street faction led by Shadin Mackenzie has just joined forces with that of the infamous Bird Nation gang. So now my peeps, that definitely don't look good, none at all, because we all know the capabilities of that infamous Bird Nation gang from Gem Road. So the top Sunlight Street is presently being run by a man known as Jermaine Maxwell, otherwise known as Devil, but he is currently overseas among you, the diaspora and has handed down the operations to his second in command, a man known as Nakeem Mullins, otherwise called Jackadiamond. I've also covered stories on that particular controversial figure. Now, who has always been contributing to crime and violence in the Kingston Western and the St. Andrew South Police Division? Now, anyone knowing the whereabouts? of Shadane Philippine Mackenzie and also Jermaine Maxwell who is presently overseas and another man known as Nakeem Mullins otherwise known as Jackadiamond in the criminal underworld.
is asked to alert the Kingston Western Police or the St. Andrew South Police Division and furnish them with the necessary information. If you don't feel like talk to the police, as always, link up on the Spot News Media or any like-minded blogger and give us the information and we will definitely pass it on to the relevant authorities who can effect immediate change. Yeah, man. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to on the Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast on the spot news media. Yeah, man. <laughs>